Hey guys, I just wanted to show you, here's my strawberry bed. These I planted from seeds, and these are a yellow variety. And if you look here, it actually has some uh, fruit on it. This is the first one. It's not very big. Probably less than the size of a dime. Oh, my pinky. But I was surprised, I thought, that maybe strawberries from seed, you know, might take a uh, a year or two before they start producing. So that's exciting. Also, as you can see here, this episode, the major difference is using straw mulch, which all the plants seem to really enjoy. Blocks a lot of the sunlight off of it. Keeps the ground a little cooler. For all these things that are starting to not enjoy the summer heat. I do believe it was 90 degrees yesterday or so. Well, this is my cabbage bed. You can see some of these are starting to really take off. In the middle I have Brussels sprouts as well. And back here along this middle, there's even little patches of corn that's coming up. But here in the middle is actually a bit of sadness as I noticed that the local rabbits have decided to take up and munch about half of them right off of the tops. Let's take a closer look on those. Here's the extent of the rabbit eating damage. As you can see it ended up eating off most of the leaves. That right there is a cabbage. This right here is a Brussels sprout. And it still has a couple large leaves on it, but you can see that you know, this leaf right here was just as big as this one. So it was this one. But now it's pretty much decimated. There's the tomato bed. There's the uh, marigolds that are being grown from seed. See on these, this one's a Polish linguista. It's finally starting to get the bugs on it. Along with this brandy wine. Both of which have been grown since seed. It's got the nice yellow flowers on it. You can see with the eggplants, they're doing quite well. Recent addition, uh, we purchased some mobile basil. Just give it a little bit of color. And over here she also purchased some black tomatoes. Here's a black prince that V purchased uh, either yesterday or the day before. Still an heirloom variety. But after seeing a black tomato at the local kind of hippie store, decided I wanted one. And I, Unlike these brandy wines and Polish linguistas, I didn't end up growing one some seed. So I figure, you know, I can still consider myself a gardener and end up purchasing uh, two transplants. Not too bad. These okra plants are finally coming along here. You can see there's two here, and there's three additional ones over here. None of the original two plants that I had uh, planted when I originally planted this out ended up surviving. They were still green, little sticks, after that last frost had uh, ended up killing them. But when I pulled them up, the roots were pretty much dead, and uh, they were never going to come back. So uh, several weeks I had planted the seeds, and they decided to come up. So those should be doing quite well, I'd say, within the month or so. Here's the potato bed. These guys are a russet variety. And the ones in the uh, back over here are a red variety. A little bit of uh, sadness on these things as of recently. Um, a lot of these leaves have these um, spots all over them, which turns out to be uh, leaf curl. It's a potato virus that uh, says that it is caused by aphids, but I really haven't had any aphid issues. But as these are non-certified virus 
in pathogen free potatoes. I just purchased them in the store. And reading online, I guess, the second year of the potatoes, that's when they end up showing uh, viruses and whatnot. So you kind of get, get what you get when you try to go cheap. But as you can see, uh, all these are starting to flower. A bunch of uh, blossoms on all of them. Even a bunch towards the, the back over here that have the, the red variety. I'll try to cut a number of these leaves off. That's why these are all like that. Just to see if um, it'll recover a bit. As you can see the uh, ones down here. Uh, as of right now, they don't have the leaf curl to them. Here's more of a closer shot. As you can see with these ones. What happens is they end up getting these little spots on them, like this. And then as it progresses, slowly they start to curl up like that. And then they dry up and they end up falling off and dying. But it has all these really cool blossoms on it. So I'm hoping that I can still end up harvesting, harvesting some of them out of them. I guess what happens is you can still eat the potato, but it ends up inside the potato itself. It has little black spots. So uh, if you're a potato producer, you can't actually sell them to restaurants and uh, supermarkets because no one wants to buy them with the little black spots on the inside. But they're still fully edible you know, because the virus doesn't do anything to us humans. Uh, it simply kind of messes up the beauty of the potato, as it were. But so long as it still tastes good and the texture's fine, I'm pretty much certain I'll probably end up making a mash out of them. These are the two broccoli that ended up deciding to head out first. So this is what the salsa broccoli ended up turning out as. As you can see, about the size of my palm. Say maybe four or five inches wide. Not too bad for a first broccoli. Here's the other one. About the same size. But this one instead decided that it wanted to uh, start to separate. Perhaps I should have harvested it a, a bit sooner before it did that. But in that I'm trying to let it go to where it's as big as possible, but just before it gets to the point where it starts opening up and flowering. If you've never grown broccoli, it's interesting because it creates these large flower nodules on the outside and you begin to think you know that that doesn't look like what you envision in the stores but eventually on the insides of these they they open up and they start producing the smaller ones which is what the head of broccoli in the stores look like So I was trying to wait to see if a number of these bigger ones would open up and form a larger head, which is what it did over on this one. As you can see, they're quite a bit smaller, you know. And also with this, inside here, I can get some light on it. Right here, there's already a number of side shoots. The other really interesting thing that I saw today, let's see if he's still there. And, yep, he, he's still there. Here, 
under the straw mulch. Right in here is a tiny little frog. Well, I guess you're not really going to be able to see that, but you'll have to take my word for it. There's a tiny little frog in there, which is nice because he's making a hole in there. He's going to end up eating all the mosquitoes and the tiny little bugs and keep my broccoli nice and safe from being eaten alive. That's giving me great harvest. All right, guys. Anyway, that's about it. Take care now. If you didn't know, onions are actually biennials just like the carrots, meaning the first year they put most of their growth, and then the second year is when they end up forming seed heads. And onions create these really long, as you can see them, really long scapes of sort. This one happens to be over three feet tall. And here at the top, it has this little ball that's covered with this little membrane on it. You can see. And inside this membrane is a bunch of little flowers. It takes a quite a long time before it finally comes out. And here's the thing without the membrane. Sorry about that. Little towel. That's what it looks like without the membrane, but just before it opens up and starts to produce a little flowers. I think it looks almost like a Dr. Seuss type of tree. Here's the other thing I wanted to show you. Here's the peas. It took a while to do something, but in pea fashion, they decided to produce quite a number of them. As you can see, there's a dozen or so already, and it's still producing a bunch of flowers on it, which is gorgeous. Let's say it's about three feet up along my trellis. And the thing that I learned the other day, it's over here is my Swiss chard. And it turns out that I'm actually allergic to it. The other day, I had eaten one of these leaves. There wasn't any dirt or anything on it. That's all that I had eaten in the morning when I got off of work. I had to work in third shift, and within, I would say, a half hour or so, I started coughing in my throat. I started to feel really itchy and, you know, nice and warm and swelling up. So it turns out that I'm allergic to them. This is a shame, because they're so pretty, and I'm growing so much of them, but, uh... I guess they're just going to be ornamental this year. If any of you are wondering where Kiki is in this episode, there he is, right by the window, hiding in this little box, enjoying life.